fellows and guests. Before I begin talking about my internship, um, I'd like to express a sincere apology on behalf of Lawrence, who I worked with alongside on the project. <laughs> he could not be here tonight due to university commitments, and he would have loved to have spoken tonight and expressed the deep joy he had working here. In the month of June this year, myself and Lawrence were delighted to be offered uh, from our university in Aberystwyth a three-week work placement at the Society here in London. It was our responsibility as collection volunteers to create a detailed catalogue and digital record of the large number, which is well over 10,000, of seal casts, matrices and impressions that the Society houses. Uh, we also applied preventative and interventive conservation methods to ensure the safety and lasting conditions of the materials. <laughs> Having taken up a similar project in the past, my first impressions about the project at the Society was that it was going to be fairly straightforward. In a way, I was right, but because of the vast number of seals and the varying conditions of them, there was a lot more work to be done than I had expected. However, this was no way off putting. It was a great challenge that me and Lawrence successfully overcame, despite only rehousing and recording a small percentage of the collection. I think we calculated as being only 5%, still a huge achievement in our eyes. As you can see from some of the images from the project, the original state of the drawers the seals were in were not perfect. One of the hardest jobs was actually removing the old pins which were holding the seals in place from the drawer. After we had done this, we, we cleaned the drawer and inserted a piece of buffering material called plastizil. As well as being supportive for the seals, it made the presentation of them look more professional. After this, we carefully cleaned each seal and, if there was one, the handwritten card which held documentation for each one. This was done with a smoke sponge made from vulcanised natural rubber, an amazing piece of kit for the conservator. Once cleaned, each seal was carefully catalogued on a spreadsheet. Information it included, but was not limited to size, colour and condition. A photograph of each seal was also taken. The documented seals were then put back into the drawers, held down by new stainless steel pins and placed back into the cupboards. We also include the labelling of each drawer and some of its contents, as you can see from this image. The labels are now clear and a lot easier to read. After the first week, we got into the flow of the work and over the other two weeks, uh, we managed to document and rehouse more seals than we had originally thought we would. One of the most exciting parts about the project for me was learning important conservation and handling skills with the seals. As mentioned, the seals were in a variety of conditions and materials, so each one had to be handled in a different way. Having never worked with seals before, it was a fantastic experience to get hands-on with new materials and learning about their history and importance, especially when it came to the great seals of our past monarchs, which were originals, with some dating back from the reign of Henry VIII. It was also great to see some of the seals we were working on mentioned in the minute, minute books that Quiver was cataloguing, uh, Quiver will go into more detail about this after me. Being involved in this project has definitely allowed me to gain more experience in a field I'd very much like to gain a career in. Um, I'm currently looking at museum study courses here in the UK and even in America, and I know that the cataloguing and conservation skills I have gained are extremely valuable, and I'm grateful for having been given the opportunity to work at the Society. If the opportunity ever comes up again, I would highly recommend it to anyone who wishes to pursue a career in the heritage sector. I'd like to thank Elizabeth New, a fellow of the Society, and one of my lecturers at university, for giving me and Lawrence the opportunity to work with such an amazing collection and a wonderful group of staff. I would also like to thank Anushka Rawdon for supervising and advising us on our efforts. You're an absolute joy to work with, and I value all of the information and advice you have given. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you have enjoyed seeing some of the work that I and Lawrence has been involved with. Thanks very much for inviting me back. Um, last academic year, I was an MA student at Sussex University on their Art History and Museums curating course. As part of this course, um, I and my fellow students have to secure a work placement. And I was lucky enough to have a placement coordinator with Connections. Mars Howard um, put me in contact with Heather Rowland here in the library, and I met with herself and Anushka Rowland in April um, in the museum room upstairs. At that meeting, Heather and Anushka presented a project that they had planned for the summer. 
and this will be a pilot project involving cataloguing medieval and later seals in the Society's collection. Being presented with a ready-formed project like this um, was extremely exciting because there's a danger on placements that one will end up without any concrete tasks. Um, there are rumours of placements involving only coffee fetching and photocopying. <laughs> to be working on this project, um, which involved books for my part, even manuscripts was more exciting still to me. Although my previous studies had been in medieval culture, I knew little about seals at this stage. In the weeks leading up to the placement, I did some reading on the recent seals project at Aberystwyth. Um, Kat and Lawrence, um, two students from that university, would also be placed at Burlington House and would be responsible for seals in the museum room, as Kat has explained. <coughs> for my part, I will document the seal impressions and related drawings in the library collections, specifically within the minute books dating from the early 18th century. The three of us met with Elizabeth New towards the beginning of the project to discuss terminology for use in recording the information about the seals. This discussion, as well as Elizabeth New's book, Seals and Sealing Practices, which you can see in the corner of the screen, was valuable to us um, as we identified the types of information that we wished to capture about these objects. We created a template for the spreadsheets, um, which we would use to enter as many details as possible about each seal. And this information was to form the basis of a future research database to hopefully become accessible online to those interested in seals and all that we can learn from them. While we all formulated these spreadsheet criteria, I wish to include some additional fields relevant to the material in the minute books. <coughs> the spreadsheet already included columns relating to dimensions, colour, any damage present, as Kat has already um, explained. To these, I added, added minute book volume number, date of entry, um, and a space for full transcription of any references in the text of the minute books to seals. One other important heading which the spreadsheet designs had in common was keywords. Once we had recorded as much as we could from the seal um, and its label, or in my case from its minute book entry, we would include as many related terms as possible. The more the better for future users of the seals database. The last addition I made was the heading related objects, and that is objects related to the seals which were also held in the society's collections. These related objects, to me, um, opened up an exciting potential. I was working in close proximity to Cat and Lawrence and the museum collection, and as I read through more and more references to seals in the minute books and watched them uncover more and more seals, it became apparent that we could begin to build up links and cross-references between the textual descriptions of seals mentioned at the meetings and the physical museum objects, which were often donated to the society following these meetings. Documenting matches like these could lead to the recovery of lost or forgotten information about objects in the collection, which didn't appear on their labels. Um, this is one example of such a match. Um, it's not as exciting as, as some. Um, we didn't actually find the seal in question or the seal matrix. Um, but we did find that this drawing is related to a dissertation which is still held in the library today. One of the really interesting aspects of the project is how it highlights the history of collecting um, at the Society of Antiques London. This history is a fairly eccentric one, even up to recent times. Um, this is an image of some blue tack seal impressions made in the 70s by one of the staff here. I'm delighted that the two collections of seals from both the museum and library were brought together in this project because they support one another and they mutually clarify this history of collecting. In the minute books, the minutes of each meeting show us exactly what sort of antiquity was on trend and of interest at a particular time or among particular fellows. The information revealed in the minutes about seal impressions and drawings is very varied. Sometimes drawings, wax impressions or even rubbings are included. Others include the lengthy accompanying dis discourse, verbatim, some list weights and dimensions of the matrix. At other times the focus of, dis of discussion is on heraldry, classical history, this is um, a seal with the zodiac, um, or Christian iconography, some are fairly unidentifiable. Some entries are especially brief or tantalising. For example, um, I quote, old deeds relating to many of these, in the seals, are in the possession of our worthy member, Mr. Thomas Martin, and nothing further on that. Initially, my brief had been to photograph and record over the pictorial material from the minute books, that is the seal impressions and um, pen and ink drawings fixed to the pages. Early on, however, it became clear that the large number of textual references to seals could reveal a treasure trove of extra information. 
um, despite the extended timeline that this would result in for the project, we agreed that the resort should be fully exploited and these references were included in full. With this added information, we could create more comprehensive object files for both museum room seals and minute book seal impressions. As time goes on, I hope more and more links may be drawn between physical objects and this primary information source, and that dates and places of discovery, provenance, will all be reunited with their object. Seals are an incredible resource for research of many kinds, historical, biographical, genealogical, studies of folklore, iconography, theology, etc., etc. The Minute Books material in particular supports and adds to our interpretation of the main collection. <coughs> Further, this material may allow us to build up a web of cross-references between library and museum collections, as mentioned. We may be able to trace the histories of specific seals more completely. These seal impressions and drawings are also a collection of themselves and teach us much about the early collection of the society and the interest of its founding members. The enthusiasm and insatiable curiosity of these fellows was inspiring throughout the daily data entry. Um, while the material in the minutes is a bit of a jumble, um, it is consistently entertaining and fascinating. Over the weeks here with my nose in the minute books, I grew very fond of many of the fellows. Um, I read their first-hand reports and saw drawings of beautiful objects they brought in to show at meetings. The only trouble is when working through 100 years of minutes, um, there comes a time when one's favourites stop showing up for meetings. I'm now working in book digitisation. The colliding of technologies, the codex and the computer screen always gives me pause. Most recently, I found myself scanning a printed book which contained reproductions of manuscript pages, and now that material is destined for online access. It reminds me what a privilege it is to get up close to the material we study to take stock fully of the physical object. So I want to thank you very much for that experience. Um, 